Hello, welcome. I'm Matthew Sleet, the author of the book, Hope Always, How to Be a Force for Life in a Culture of Suicide. I'm so glad that you've joined me for this video series. I truly believe that whether you watch this video series alone or use it alongside the book, you'll be miles ahead of most folks when it comes to helping someone who may be struggling with depression, anxiety, or suicidal thoughts. In the past, I've made films to accompany some of the books I've written. I've filmed in Hollywood, in the Redwoods, and in the workshop of America's most famous woodworker. But for our conversation about suicide, I want to keep everything as real as possible. So no CGI, no green screens, and no cameras on cranes. Instead, I'm inviting you into my home. I'm talking to you from the actual apartment where my wife and I live. So welcome to my home. I'm honored that you're here with me today. Come on in. I want to thank you and applaud you for wanting to learn more about the subject of suicide prevention. You've already taken the most important step. You care. When Jesus told his most famous parable, the story of the Good Samaritan, the first thing that separated the Good Samaritan from the not so good people who came before him was that the Samaritan's heart was moved to compassion. I'm sure that like me, when you think about somebody who is hurting so much, they're thinking of ending their own life, your heart literally aches for them. The book Hope Always in this video series is about translating your compassion into real steps that can actually save another person's life. First, let me explain where I'm coming from. I'm trained as a physician. I specialized in emergency medicine. Emergency departments in America are on the front lines when it comes to suicide. When I became a doctor, I didn't believe in God, but I did believe in the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath precedes Christianity by four centuries and states that a physician will never kill someone, nor will they help someone else kill themselves or anyone else. When I graduated from medical school, it just made sense to me that doctors should be about the business of easing, suffering, and preserving life, period. When I was in my late 40s, I read a Bible for the first time and I became a Christian. Becoming a follower of Christ changed a lot of things in my life. Christ says that the work of his followers is to believe him. We have to trust that what he says is right is right and what he says is wrong is wrong. And that meant I stopped doing many things I thought were okay. And I also had to start doing things I'd never done before. But in the area of doctors holding all life to be sacred, I found that the Bible was in complete agreement with the Hippocratic Oath. I think that is one of the reasons why the largest portion of the New Testament was written by a Greek physician named Luke. As an atheist physician, I reasoned that all life was to be guarded. And as a Christian one, I hold the same belief as an article of faith. That's where I'm coming from. So just how bad is the suicide situation in America today? During the coming year, it's estimated that 10 million Americans will wrestle with whether or not to end their own lives. 10 million. Of that 10 million, one and a half million will end up in an emergency department over the coming year. And during that time period, almost 50,000 will die by suicide and nearly 100,000 more will die by overdose. The suicide attempt happens every 22 seconds in the United States. And one life is lost to suicide every 11 minutes. To put this into perspective, 
how common suicide has become. For every murder you hear about, there are two and a half times more suicides. Suicide is now the leading cause of death in 13 year olds. In my city, during a three month period, we had a 10 year old, an 11 year old, a 12 year old, a 13 and a 14 year old, all die by suicide. But what do these numbers mean? Is this just the way it is? Has it always been this way? One way of measuring suicide rates is to number them in occurrences per 100,000 per year. Our current suicide rate is 14.5 per 100,000 people per year. This ties the all-time high for suicide in our country set in the aptly named Great Depression. Well, okay, you might say, the suicide rate is bad, but it's been this bad before. Well, not actually. You see, what has skewed the meaning of these statistics is modern medicine. Unlike in the 1930s, today, most people who attempt suicide are saved. If we find someone in trouble, we can activate a universal 911 system. A single ambulance has more equipment on it to save lives today than an entire hospital had in the 1930s. We can reverse overdoses of everything from narcotics to benzodiazepines to acetaminophen to digoxin. You name it. We can dialyze off poisons. If an overdose wipes out someone's respiratory drive, we have mechanical ventilators to breathe for them. Modern medicine saves the vast majority of those who attempt suicide. Thank God. But what would happen if we didn't have modern medicine, if all that was available was the technology that existed in the 1930s, we would have somewhere between half a million and a million deaths by suicide in the coming year. That means that without the invention and intervention of modern medicine, our suicide rate would be 100 to 200 times higher than it was in the 1930s. In fact, we are at a place no society in history has ever been. Modern medicine is simply able to cover up the true extent of society's despair. What should we do about it? Mental health experts have recommended that we make screening for depression more available, that we destigmatize marginalized groups, and that everyone have access to crisis counseling. For the last three decades, America has done all these things. One in eight adults is currently taking an antidepressant. We have a national suicide prevention hotline that anyone can call day or night. But here's the problem. For several decades, America has done virtually everything recommended by mental health workers. And for the last 20 years, the suicide rate has increased by about 2% every single year. Should we just keep on doing more of the same and expect a different result? Maybe it's time we started to look at suicide in a different way. And that's just what we're going to be doing in our next segment. But first, I wanna encourage you, don't get overwhelmed by the magnitude of the problem. You and I are not powerless. Next time, we're going to discuss the ways that we can actually save another's life. I'm really looking forward to it.